<laughs> Ramadan has begun again and of course you know all we hear is happy Ramadan and what we can say they say Ramadan Karim and we like to say Ramadan Kari which is miserable Ramadan it and it's really miserable it, month it, it's a dark month really it's part of those uh, uh, um, times that the Islamists try to impose the will on society by different means e where they can by rules and regulation and threat and police and prison and security where they don't have the power try to sort of try to do the exactly same thing in a friendly way and compel pe people to actually uh, respect uh, the Islamic rules and regulation which yeah. is a horrible thing yeah. to do. They keep talking about respect I mean I want to say you know why don't you respect my right not to fast you know why are you fasting you're disrespecting my right to fast it's always in defense of their rules and against yes. those who don't want to do it. And of no. course, lots of people are persecuted, which is why every Ramadan we defy fasting rules because we think it's important to remember all those people who are persecuted. Uh, and also, I mean, it's a huge health issue, isn't it? People not eating, not drinking water for 18 plus hours in some of the hottest, uh, you know, uh, climates in the world. It's just such a calamity for a lot of people and they impose it on children they force some children that are even in the schools in uh, in germany the teachers have said this is unhealthy and trying to defend they're trying to defend children and say look children should not be forced and children should not be fasting but you'll have the pressure of the Islamists and the media you'll see the bbc and the independent and other news uh, agencies trying to argue the case that oh, there is no problem with fasting for young children. No, it is. It's, there is, it's, it's, it's health there is issues. Uh, fasting is unhealthy for uh, not eating for many, many hours uh, in a day and suddenly you stuff your face with gluttony and uh, uh, you know eating too much with these unhealthy, completely unhealthy. Yeah, it's interesting because they always say that you know it's great uh, they do fasting in order to show solidarity with people who are hungry. But then there's this amount of gluttony that takes place when you know the sun goes down and people can eat what they want. And in fact, people gain weight during Ramadan. Yes, but during the day, it's you know you just can't move anymore. And why do you have to do that to uh, to express solidarity with people who don't have any? Well, go and support them. Set up charities. Exactly. organization to uh, you know de deal with inequality in society which the Islamists are one of the major uh, contributing factors in inequality in many societies and of course what happens is because of this pressure even here in the West I mean so many of uh, my friends talk about how you know the minute they go somewhere they're told are you fasting or you know sorry you you won't be able to eat uh, assuming that people are fasting and this pressure uh, for people to fast even children even pregnant women who are not really supposed to be fasting anyway people who are traveling we're not supposed to be fasting, people are sick, and nonetheless this pressure that they do it. And so a lot of people hide food or pretend they're fasting when they're not really. Yeah, but these Islamists have power and is that social pressure, people are hiding. And that's not good, you know, for people to pretend you know to do something else and that's you know creates us sometimes silly situation yeah definitely <laughs> yeah I mean it was very funny when I lived in the Sudan uh, in the 80s I was sitting with one of my uh, Christian friends Sudanese Christian and we were eating uh, you know our lunch together in his office and uh, this uh, big shot guy comes in from from the um, organization who I didn't know so I wasn't sure what his position would be so you know I had food I, I was picking up a a, a morsel to eat and then I, I was like oh here you go Joseph have your food as if I was feeding him and then after the guy left we were laughing because we said most probably I'll get stoned for having some sort of illicit <laughs> relationship feeding someone rather than just saying I, I'm eating and there is all that pressure isn't there which which makes it even worse and it, it, pressure also here in yeah. the west yeah. you hear about people uh, feeling feeling those pressures and you, you, they try to give you know justification and silly sort of scenarios that uh, people have, uh, and the reason for how good this is, either refer to uh, Islamic te text or they refer to uh, incidents and the stories to justify this horrible month and, and practice. So you've heard about, there's a, there's a couple of hadiths and things. One is where, you know, Muhammad is asked to come up this mountain and he hears these people howling and he asks, why are these people howling? And it says, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, then I was taken, I saw people hanging by their hamstrings with the sides of their mouth torn and oh. blood pouring from their mouths. And I said, who are these? And he said, these are the people who broke their fast before it was time. A minute earlier. This is what happens to you. So it's but not even God those loves you. who are drinking. God loves you. <laughs> this is just for you. You know, he loves you. And he's the best thing. He's, you know, the most magnificent and merciful. A minute and earlier. It's like, yeah, it's bad. This is what <laughs> happens to you. This is just like... So better not to just do it. At least sadistic, it, you know, very God sadistic, this is. Very sadistic. Yes. And of course, there's another one, which is interesting because you know how they keep talking about how fasting is the pillar of uh, one of the five pillars of Islam and it's to show compassion and all. And if you look at the text, for example, it's Allah saying, I want you to fast for me. And if you do it for me, then you will be rewarded. And there's so one... He's very selfish. He's so, he's so selfish self-centered. Selfish God. Selfish he's so God. self-centered. Yes. And there's one part where he says, you know, the smell of the mouth of someone who's been fasting, which we know is not a pretty sight, is better than, you know, the most fragrant musk. And, you know, we got to call it, he's lying, isn't he? Yes, because it's disgusting and it's smelly. That is just not Terrible. possible. Yes. So Even food, God must have his limits. Eat your food, brush your teeth, <laughs> and eat no stupid religious <laughs> ceremonies and rules and regulation. Ramadan is stupid, <laughs> is unfriendly, is unhealthy, is oppressive. Don't do it. And I mean, uh, oppression. And if they always refer to the fact that uh, uh, Ramadan and, and fasting is, is no compulsion. No compulsion. Yet. There's no compulsion in anything. But everywhere you look, you know, there's compulsion. You look at... Uh, you, you try to do that in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Saudi Arabia. No compulsion, seriously. In some places, in Britain even, no compulsion, really. In Iran? What happens to you? Iran, Iran? it's, uh, you know, three flogging, months. lashes. And three months in prison. In pr- up to three months in prison. In uh, Morocco, one to six months in prison. In Pakistan, up to three months in prison. Seriously, there is a lot of persecution going on of people who don't want to fast. So it's important, I think, to defy fasting. Yes. And in solidarity with people who... Uh, who do not fast and who are persecuted and uh, flogged, imprisoned uh, and, you know, or daily on the street, actually yeah. hit There are police in many countries who go around and if there's any signs, they hit people on the street. It's yeah. so oppressive and medieval. So that's why every Ramadan, what we do, we drink in solidarity and in objection to yeah. one month of bleak month of Ramadan and we celebrate uh, fast-defying activities across the globe. Yeah, and of course there are many fast-defying protests. There's one in London, for example, by the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain. You've got uh, fast-defiers in places like Algeria and Morocco. And of course this is something that uh, people do without going to a protest. But they just drink and they eat as they normally would and they're persecuted for it. So we say long live fast-defying and no thank you for Ramadan. No, thank you. Cheers.